For the first time in cinematic history of Spider-Man, our local neighborhood hero's identity is revealed, placing his superhero duties at tension, and this greatly hinders his normal life and putting those he loves about most in danger. When he enlists Doctor Strange's assistance to restore his secret, the spell rips a hole in their world, unleashing the most powerful enemies to ever face Spider-Man in any realm. Now, Peter must face his most difficult challenge yet, one that will not only change his own future but also the future of the multiverse. Before we continue, consider subscribing and commenting with your thoughts, and then relax as I wrap things up for you. Sit back, relax, and let's roll. Peter and MJ return to the Parker's apartment, where Aunt May, Marissa Tomei, and Happy, John Favreau, had just broken up, but they soon learn that Peter's identity has been revealed. While Peter investigates to find out what exactly happened together with May and Happy, they spot news helicopters outside the flat, and Peter is forced to comply with authorities. Police question Peter, MJ, and Ned, Jacob Badalin, about their alleged involvement in terrorist operations. Peter is defended by MJ and Ned, but he finds a lawyer to help him dismiss charges blind lawyer Matt Murdock, Charlie Cox. Despite trying to return to a normal life, Peter is constantly hounded by people who think he is either a hero or a menace. He feels like he is constantly under surveillance, and he is constantly having to defend himself against people who think he is either doing something extraordinary or doing something terrible. Peter tries to follow his friend's advice and make the relationship work, but it's difficult. He's constantly worried about how he's affecting his partner and whether or not they're happy. The students are focusing on preparing for their college applications, but they have all of them been rejected because of recent events. The three girls are all rejected by their goals school, MIT. Peter feels like he's partially to blame for his friends' problems because of the associations he has with them. He worries that he's caused them a lot of pain and he feels terrible about it. Peter visits Dr. Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch to ask if it would be possible for him to time travel and change the events that led to people learning his secret identity. But Strange thinks the risks of tampering with time are already high enough as it is. Instead, Strange tells Peter that he should focus on maintaining his privacy and doing his best to live a normal life in the present. Strange then comes up with a spell that could fix things, although Wong, Benedict Wong, warns Strange that the consequences could be catastrophic. After Strange leaves, Wong ignores Peter and takes him down to a lower level where he begins to cast the spell so that everyone will forget that he is Spider-Man. Strange then goes to a lower level himself, where he begins to cast the spell so that everyone will forget that he is Spider-Man. As Peter begins to alter the spell in the middle of its casting, the unstable magic causes a brief rift in the space-time continuum. Strange manages to calm the magic and seal the rift once again. Strange scolded Peter when Peter mentioned that he had not contacted the MIT administrator to talk to them about reconsidering for MJ and Ned before asking for the spell. Strange said that this was not the way to handle things and that Peter should have contacted the administrator first. Peter gets in touch with Flash, Tony Revolori, who tells him that he is Spider-Man's best friend and helps Peter try to reach the MIT administrator, Paula Newsom, who is heading to the airport and is going across the Alexander Hamilton Bridge. Peter makes it to the administrator's office, but his spider sense starts going off. He starts to talk to the administrator, but his instincts tell him that something is wrong. The bridge beneath which cars were parked began to bulge and throb, and people began to flee in terror. Then, mechanical tentacles burst out from beneath the bridge, gripping and pulling cars away with them. For years, Dr. Octopus has been lurking beneath the bridge, planning his next move. He's become a powerful and feared scientist, and he's not afraid to use his skills for evil. Dr. Octopus is a dangerous adversary, and he'll do anything to achieve his goals. He's a force to be reckoned with, and he'll stop at nothing to get what he wants. Underneath the bridge, a tall, dark figure rises. It's Dr. Otto Octavius, or Dr. Octopus, who has changed quite a bit since his last appearance on the world stage. As Spider-Man, Peter confronts the Vulture. They clash in a furious battle, but Peter proves to be a powerful opponent. Ultimately, the Vulture is defeated. He charges at Doc Ock, but the villain keeps attacking him. Finally, he manages to rescue the administrator, 
but it's too late. When the admin's car falls off the bridge, Spider-Man manages to web it up safely before Doc Ock catches him under the bridge and rips off a piece of the Spider-Man suit's nanotech, which attaches itself to his tentacles. However, thanks to the suit's programming, Peter is able to control the tentacles and uses them to pull the administrator up to safety. Otto then observes that this Peter is not the Peter Parker he is familiar with and whom he blames for his failed reactor experiment. She tells Peter that he is a hero and that she will talk to the board about MJ and Ned's applications, as well as his. Just then, someone threw a pumpkin bomb onto the bridge and blew up some cars. Norman Osborn rode into the chamber, and Otto recognized him. Doctor Strange says that because of Peter's meddling with the spell, people from other universes that know about Peter being Spider-Man have broken through. Strange gave Peter a magic gauntlet that allows him to capture the multiverse figures. Peter brought in MJ and Ned to help out. Strange allows them to work from the basement of the Sanctum. Otto tries to find the others, but he can't see Norman since he died years earlier. He thinks it's impossible, but he knows that he's not the only one who's affected by this. Peter walks out into the dark field near the large electrical towers. He is apprehensive, but excited to explore this new location. He saw Max Dillon, Jamie Foxx, taking energy from the towers, and when he called out to him, he began to fire electrical bolts at Spider-Man. Flint Marco remembers how Peter Parker helped him after an earlier adventure, and Peter has to explain that he is not the Peter that Flint knows. Flint is protected by Sandman, who remembers how Peter Parker helped him, but Peter has to explain that he is not the Peter that Sandman knows. Peter then removes the charges from the tower to bring down Max. His formerly glowing body returns to its normal appearance. Peter then used the gauntlet to send Max and Flint to the holding cells. Norman regained his composure and smashed his helmet, before retreating to the feast center where May worked. She called Peter and told him that he was there. Norman seems confused and unsettled. He talks about how he's in an unfamiliar place and mentions his son, Harry. May encourages Peter to help Norman out as best he can. Jameson continued reporting on his show about Spider-Man, and he received word from his sources about Peter's whereabouts to try and catch him for a big story. Peter brought Norman to the Sanctum, where he saw Otto. Norman recognized Otto, and Peter explained that he was the man who had attacked him years ago. In Flint's universe, both Norman and Otto are dead, while Lizard recognizes Max from his formerly nerdy appearance and Max acknowledges the lizard's rampage across New York where he tried to turn everyone into creatures like himself. Strange brings in a relic called the Machina de Cadavas, which contains the botched spell that will send the villains back to their universes. After learning that he and his friends are all destined to die fighting Spider-Man, Peter comes up with a different plan. He believes there is another way to stop Spider-Man, and he sets out to find it. He grabs the relic from Strange and escapes into the streets quickly fleeing the scene. Strange separates Peter's spirit from his body, but his reflexes help him dodge Strange, and he gets himself back together to continue running away. Strange brings Spider-Man into the mirror dimension, where Peter continues to try to convince Strange that there must be a better way to fix things without letting the villains die. When Spider-Man realizes that the mirror dimension is like geometry, he is able to find a way to trap Strange in web and secure the relic before escaping and leaving Strange there. This allows him to take the portal creator, which he uses to escape the mirror dimension and return to reality. Meanwhile, Peter has a plan to cure the villains of their corruptions before sending them home. He believes that this will prevent them from hurting others, and will instead send them back to their own world in a better state. He leaves the relic with MJ and Ned, along with the portal maker before taking the villains to his and May's new apartment, where he finds the components necessary to get the job done. Peter shows the villains a stark fabricator that can create whatever they need, but Max is drawn to the energy given off by the arc reactor. With Norman's help, Peter develops a new chip for Otto that will allow him to control the tentacles instead of being controlled by them. Otto returns the nanotech to Peter's suit, and Peter gives Max a device that will disable his electric power. Unfortunately, Peter's spider sense went off and he saw Norman reverting to his goblin form in an attempt to sabotage the plan. Goblin convinces Max to embrace his power and reject the cure. 
The Peters continue to work on cures for the diseases, while also getting to know each other better and finding out how unique their abilities are. They are also amazed by how Toby Peter can shoot organic webs from his hands. Tom Peter expressed some concerns to MJ about the upcoming trial, but she reassured him that she would be there with him every step of the way. He calls the Daily Bugle to ask to speak to Jameson, explaining that he created the current mess and that he will fix it. Spider-Man lured the villains to the Statue of Liberty, where they were adding a Captain America shield. MJ and Ned guarded the relic. The Peters talk about other past experiences, like Toby Peter fighting the symbiote and Tom Peter fighting Thanos, while Andrew Peter laments fighting Rhino, but the other two assure him that he is still amazing. Soon, Sandman, Lizard, and Electro showed up and began to fight the Spider-Man. The battle was fierce, but the Spider-Man eventually emerged victorious. As the heroes try to deliver the cures, they keep getting knocked down. However, they are not deterred and continue to work to save the day. The three Spider-Men band together to take on specific targets. They work together to take down their enemies one by one. Toby Peter fights Sandman and manages to give him the cure, returning him to his human form of flint. Toby Peter promises to bring him home to his daughter. Lizard saw the open portal and quickly chased after MJ and Ned. They ran out onto the scaffolding and the lizard quickly followed. Tom Peter succeeded in turning Lizard back into Kurt, restoring him to his human form. Electro proved to be strong, but Otto reappeared and helped Andrew Peter by removing the arc reactor with his tentacles and placing the cure onto his chest. Otto then disappeared, leaving Andrew Peter to recover. While Max is remorseful, Andrew Peter doesn't hold anything against him, and Max is thankful. Goblin flew in on his glider, ready to attack. Ned managed to get Strange out of the mirror dimension, and he watched the three Spideys in action. Ned was very impressed with Spider-Man's abilities and was especially impressed with how he was able to stop the Vulture. Ned also thought that Spider-Man's costume was very stylish. Goblin's continual destruction of the scaffolding caused it to eventually break down, and MJ fell over the edge. Tom Peter tried to rescue her, but the glider hit him. He was badly injured but he kept trying to help her until he finally passed away. Andrew jumped in and saved MJ, and he briefly appeared to feel redeemed for helping Gwen. Tom Peter used one of Goblin's bombs to break down the glider and crash onto the fallen cap shield. This caused the shield to collapse, allowing the other gliders to fly in and attack the cap. He webs Goblin down and begins to pummel him in fury. Tom Peter then attempted to stab his brother, but Toby Peter intervened. Goblin stabbed Toby Peter in the back, and he started laughing at Tom Peter for not being able to save May. But he injected him with the cure and completely removed Goblin from Norman's body, and he felt great remorse for hurting his Peter. A crack opens up in the sky, revealing more villains about to break through the multiverse's barriers. Strange says he can't stop them from breaking through. Peter then suggests a final spell that would not only erase people's memories of him being Spider-Man, but erase his memory, period. Even Strange, MJ, Ned, and Happy will all forget who Peter is, but it is the only way to fix things. Peter bids his variants farewell with a group hug, all of them acknowledging each other as brothers. He then goes to tell MJ and Ned what has to happen. Ned tearfully said goodbye to his best friend, Peter, while MJ professed her love for Peter and shared a final kiss with him before he left. Everyone who participated in the experiment is then returned to their own universe. Jameson continues to slander Spidey in the media. Peter now lives alone, with nobody knowing who he is. He goes to the cafe where MJ works and finds her and Ned. They are still friends and have both gotten into MIT. Peter talks to MJ for a moment before walking away. He later visits May's grave, where Happy is as well and asks how Peter knew her. He says, through Spider-Man, and both he and Happy acknowledge how many people may help. Peter returns to his apartment, where he uses a police scanner to listen in on any criminal activities. He then continues to fulfill his duties to protect New York as Spider-Man. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, so you can get notified every time we bring new films.